Hi, this is Miss Slitton, and this is my wonderful period three AP Bio class. Say hi. hi. All right. So when we look at this, this is a little section of all the equations and formulas you need to be comfortable with. And some of these we have already talked about. What's one we have spent some time on? Chi-square test. Okay. So this is one way to analyze your data. Claim, evidence, reason. So if you're going to make a claim about your data, you have to have evidence to support your claim, and so you have to analyze your data in order to provide it, provide evidence, yes? The reason is the explanation behind that, okay? So um, if I look at this, we already are comfortable with chi-square test. Look at this, this is the mean. What is the mean in a, in a what, what would be another way, for, another name for mean? Average. Yeah, that equation is terrifying, okay? How do you, without looking that equation, how would you calculate the average? You do what? Tell me. Add them all up. Divided by, divided by the number, then your sample size, right? So you know how to do that. You are not going to sit here and try to work this out, okay? Don't bother. What I want you to pay attention to is this right here. So if you see that, you know that means in your mind you're going to be thinking average, okay? Which the word here we're going to use is mean. Okay? Are you good on that one? Okay. So then let's talk standard deviation and standard error. Now, a couple of things. First of all, do you see these little asterisks right here? Okay. Now, if anybody has pulled up the full um, paper that I gave you or you could get anywhere or you could Google, does anybody know what that asterisk means? Anybody have their full equation sheet up? Say it again. Well, all of them are ones they say that you could use on the AP exam. That's why it's, they give them to you. The asterisk means they say you will not actually have to use the equation to calculate something, but you have to understand the purposes behind the equation. Okay? That's what, they're, that's what that means. So you won't actually be given values that you have to use. Okay? You, but they could reference it. Now I am going to tell you, the very first AP exam, they said they wouldn't, you didn't need to know the old school lab. However, in the questions, questions came up on the old school labs. Had we even reviewed the old school labs at all, our kids would have been an advantage to over, the, over those. They say you don't have to use these, however, um, I can't remember, I think it was the first test, there were something like three questions on standard error and standard deviation, three essay questions referenced it. Not one question on the cell or the functionality of the cell or the organelles of the cell or cellular respiration or photosynthesis, but three questions on standard deviation, standard error. So I am telling you this only because it's not that I don't trust them, okay? So I want to make sure you understand it and you'll have a better idea of what it means is if you actually practice using it, okay? Now, those of you that are in math, you probably didn't use a standard deviation question like this. It might have been a little bit different. What was, what was different about it? Those of you who have done this before. Just entering in the calculator. Right, okay, but what kind of calculator are you gonna have on your test? Five function calculator. Anything else different besides entering on the calculator? Did some of you have it where there was just an N here? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that. Those are just two different types of ways of calculating standard deviation. If I went and asked every single one of you in our population, which is what N would stand for, it's our sample size here. If I asked every one of you, for instance, what's your caffeine load today? How many of you have had caffeine? Raise your hand. Okay, wow, that's it? I'm so proud of you guys. I can't live without it. Okay. So there's four of you, including me, that had a caffeine load. If I go in and find out how much, so yours would be zero, 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 zero. I am getting data from every single individual in our population. That's when you would just use straight up N, okay? This type of standard, and I think that's called sigma, and it's like a zero, it looks like an O, like, like a cursive O, yeah, one, yeah. yeah. Okay, that would be this. This one is a little bit different, okay? This is a sample of our population. So this is assuming that as biologists, we're not gonna be able to find every single transpiring green pepper plant, okay? 
that's out there, we are taking a sample of them. And that's why you see the N minus one on the bottom. Now, are they gonna ask you that on an exam? No, but I know when you're working in math and then you're working in here, you're gonna be like, oh, wait, why is this equation different? That's why, okay? This is the only one you need to know. So standard deviation, you already know what that means. What does that mean? Sum up. Sum up. Okay, so then you've got these x's. Well, one of those x's you already know. What's this second x right here? What's that mean? That's the mean. So that mean or average, right? So then this is just the only x we don't know because we know how to do n minus 1. So here's, I'm just going to blow it up a little bit, okay, so you can see it. What standard deviation is looking at is how tight is your data? Do you remember in, in foundations when you were looking and, at graphing and learning how to graph, you talked about how accurate was your data and how, and how precise it was. Remember accuracy and precision and there was a bullseye? Yeah. And if it was real tight, it was real precise. And if it was accurate, it was close to what it should be if there should be some expected result, right? <clears throat> okay, so what standard deviation is, is saying is just how tight is your data? Is it all over the place? Because if it's all over the place, you're gonna have a large standard deviation. If they're tight, you're gonna have a very small standard deviation. So when we do our transpiration lab, let's say um, in the wind, we have somebody who's lost five, lost six, and then somebody else 10, 12 mils, somebody lost one mil. We are all over the place. We're gonna have a big old standard deviation, okay? But if you're like five, six, 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 five, four point five, seven, that's very tight. Our standard deviation number is going to be small. So what you do is you have to take each value that you have and you need to subtract off the average from that, which basically means I'm this plot point, how far am I from what the average would be? I'm this plot point where I'm farther away from the average now. Take that value and square it. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the chi-square test. Yeah, observed minus expected squared, okay? So similar to that, but we're just taking it from the average, squaring it. We have to do that for every single point we have. So for instance, in our lab, if we had six plants that were in the mist, we would do for each one of them, how much on average did they lose, and then subtract that from each one of those six values. And you square it, and then you add each one of those values up, the different squared sum. Then you divide that by our total sample size. If we had six plants in the mist, sample size minus one, then we would divide it by what? Five. And then we take that value and square root, that's our standard deviation. And that's saying how far are we off. So standard deviation, it's used to tell, this is like a Wikipedia, this is like you know, I'm just kind of abbreviating it, but this would be uh, how, how spread out is our data. So let's try it with this data set. Let's see, let's calculate the standard deviation to the nearest tenth. Now, for three, four, five, and 10, don't do it, do it on a five function calculator. Don't go, you could go get a standard deviation online calculator, there's several of them. I don't want you to do that. I want you to actually do it. Okay, so get maybe a piece of paper because you're going to have several numbers you need to add up or do it right in your Google Doc, but do it independently, okay? Do it independently, and I'm going to pause this while you're doing that. Okay, so you were able to um, put in your answers. Let's see how we did. Okay, so these are fairly close. You want me to tell you what happened, 9.7? Yeah, yeah, you didn't square root it, okay? What happened here to orange? What, what did they do? Yes, and on your AP exam, they're gonna tell you what to round to. So if they say round to the hundredth, you'd be fine, but they didn't. They said round to the tenth. So you would need to make this 3.1. That's how you screwed up, this is how you screwed up, okay? Orange, brown, and purple all screwed up the same way. Okay, so at least you know you know how to do it. Your issue wasn't following directions. All right, you don't want to make that kind of mistake on your AP exam where you did the hard part, you did all those numbers, but then you still had a problem. 
Okay, so write that down somewhere. 3.1 is the answer. Do you have that? Yeah. Okay, so now don't get ahead of yourself because I want you to think for a minute. We are now saying how tight is this data? Okay, so if we were going to plot this, right, on a graph. Oh, you can't see it. Let's try this one. Okay, what did you say your mean, what did we say your average was, your mean? What was your mean for this data? Okay, so if this is um, 5 and this is 10 and this is 0 down here, so I would plot somewhere 5.5. Are you all right with that? Now, if I actually looked at all the different points, I've got a 3, I've got a 4, I've got a 5, and I've got a 10. Okay, so I would be tending to think, I would be tending to think that that 10 is actually what? Yeah, what? Outlier. Outlier. Because I have a pretty, you know, big standard deviation. So that is just how tight is my data. Now, this is a different analysis for standard error. In standard error, this is saying how accurate is our average. That's what we want to know. Okay? Standard deviation is how much do they deviate from each other. Standard error is how accurate it is it. Do we want a big error or a small error? Small. We want a small error. We want to be pretty close. How this sample that we took, our sample deviation, how likely is that 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 is a good sample? So when you do this equation, you take your standard deviation that we just calculated and you divide it by the square root of your actual sam of your sample size. So how many did I sample? I sampled four. So I would take the square root of, go ahead, you do it. This one should be pretty quick, right? Khan. Hang on, hang on. So why are we not equations? One more time. Oh, I know why, because I put it here. <laughs> Look, why isn't it showing up? At this point, we have our standard error. What we are looking here is when I take the sample out, how likely, how likely is that this is true to our entire population? This number, when we go back here, okay, and we look at this equation, whatever our standard deviation is, when we're calculating our standard error, it's going to be heavily influenced by what? How many we have, our sample size. If we have a large sample size, then our standard error is going to be small. This is really a factor of your sample size when you look at your standard error. How accurate is it? And this is when you see standard error bars like what they have here. Okay, this SEM standard error on the mean, okay, with a sample size, an N of, what does it say here? Five. This is their plus or minus. When they plot that, when they make their bar graph, they're saying, uh, you know, I am plus or minus 10 or whatever it is on this one. Okay, or I'm plus or minus, what was our answer to our thing? 3.1. I'm plus or minus 3.1 on this one. Could be 3.1 higher, it could be 3.1 lower. That's your standard error. And on your transpiration lab, that's what I want you to do. You're going to take your data and you're going to put it into the core share data. We'll see averages and I want you to, you have to, in order to calculate the standard error, what do you first have to do? You've got to do the standard deviation and then you can calculate your standard error. Does that make sense? Okay. So hope that was helpful, except for that second answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs>